Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Most Back to All of the Basics. Yay, we have arrived. I'm sure you enjoy Back to Basic. Too back to basic. I like it. I like it. That, that, okay. The sequel nobody wanted and nobody expected. So we are here today following up on that real hit video last week, which was a copy paste of a video from a different series. But I'm hoping if you're keeping up on our series in order that you found some useful information in that one. It was a generally a good video where we were talking about the use of divine nuclear weapons against the cities of Sodom, Gomorrah, and Lamedum, all the other cities of the plain. A um, whole bunch of other places, with the exception of, and I can't forget to mention this, the exception of the city of Zoar, because Lot didn't want to walk that far. Um, so, you know, Bible being Bible. So today, we are getting ourselves further and deeper, further back and farther into Genesis chapter 19. Hooray! But, in case you forgot, because I know I didn't, I'm still Pastor Don. Hey! And I'm joined by Courtney, who is also the best. Hey. hey! So we are going to do the thing, and we're going to Genesis it up a little bit. And um, I'm going to go ahead and issue a warning before we dive into this one. Oh, um, yeah, content warning. Yeah, content warning. This one gets weird. <laughs> like, it's, it's, there's sex, incest sex. It's, this is one of those passages in the Bible that we definitely rarely preach sermons on and does not come up in Sunday school all that much. Uh, because if it did, there would be a lot more questions that people would have that we wouldn't have easy answers to. Although it would make for some really, really interesting Sunday school classes, come to think of it. Well, let, let's let's start with looking at it as adults, then. <laughs> adults is a pretty big air quotes, because I'm going to make jokes about it. Oh, well, it's, here's the thing, you, you can approach this passage with a with a couple of different different perspectives um we can we're going to be weirded out by it regardless mm -hmm. do, you, do you laugh at it a little bit having given a content warning i don't know but that's my, that's my coping mechanism right yeah <laughs> people deal with stuff like this in different ways we're we're goons we are going we're 12 yeah basically so. I don't think we have grown up since the day we met. Eh, I don't know. I can keep a clean kitchen now. All right, let's see. All right, Genesis chapter 19 from verse 30. You want to read it? Yeah, sure, why not? All right, take it away, Courtney. Now Lot went up out of Zoar and settled in the hills with his two daughters, for he was afraid to stay in Zoar. So he lived in a cave with his two daughters. And the firstborn said to the younger, our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to come into us after the manner of all the world. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, so that we may preserve offspring through our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. He did not know when she lay down or when she rose. On the next day, the firstborn said to the younger, Look, I lay last night with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also. Then you go in and lie with him, so that we may preserve offspring through our father. So they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger rose and lay with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she rose. Thus both the daughters of Lot became pregnant by their father. The firstborn bore a son and named him Moab, and he is the ancestor of the Moabites to this day. The younger also bore a son and named him Ben-Ami, he is the ancestor of the Ammonites to this day. All right, we also need to go in and edit a content warning in the beginning. Rape. Yeah, I straight up happen. rape. Like, yeah, there's a there's a lot. There's a lot. Just just straight rape. Like. I mean, <laughs> could you call it date rape if it's your father? That's a definition question for the ages. They, they, I mean, if you're using alcohol, I think it still counts. They essentially roofied their dad. Yeah, more or less. Now, there is... Twice, I, I was, two nights in a row! Yeah, like, there is a, there's a lot to, to talk about here from the literary to the content-based. 
uh, to the degree of heavy listing that the word two in verse 31 is doing, because, oh my God, just contextually, that, that one word is doing a lot of heavy lifting. And wh uh, which verse are you talking about? Yeah, verse 31. And the firstborn said to the younger, our father is old and there is not a man on earth to come into us after the manner of all the world. That too is doing a lot of heavy lifting in English. Um, yes, and I did make a dirty joke using grammar and the Bible because that's me. Anyway, um, moving on. Uh, so yeah, there is, there's a lot just just a lot going on here now there's a lot to unpack and i kind of want to just throw out the whole suitcase like just why okay there there has to be, why is this like this Don? all right so I, you've explained to me enough times you're like this is early early like spoken history written down later stuff yeah the so that's reason a piece of it. is different than later parts of the bible why now, why what is this why? i'm going to throw a few points on here first and foremost in terms of one uh literary prism for criticism first off uh i'm going to be honest i spent some time with the commentaries before recording this episode because i wanted to be able to at least semi-adequately answer that exact question but just why um, and let me tell you, even most of the commentaries give this passage a wide ass berth. Um, most of them don't want anything to do with it. The few that touch on it are mostly to say things like, literarily speaking, this is an odd insertion and is generally probably an insertion from some other post-apocalyptic tale, like a carryover from Noah and the flood, perhaps. Um, or an assumption that the cities of the plain desolation was more apocalyptic or something like that. In terms of literary criticism, this doesn't seem like it belongs to the larger story of Sodom and Gomorrah from the perspective. Why did they, why did, why did they need, I mean, I, I get like from a myth standpoint, the whole, you know, incest to pro propagate the species type mm -hmm. stuff. But there was a town right there. They chose to go live in a cave. Right. Now, again, if we're taking this as a later literary interpolation, like that means that we're taking the let's screw dad and repopulate the species piece from elsewhere and adding it into here because that's where it seems to make sense and it's part of our history. And it maintains its historical connection because this is the line by which they build their connection to the Moabites and the Ammonites. Uh, yada, yada, yada. And this is one of the bigger themes in the older sections of the Old Testament is not just the history of the Jews, but the history of all the neighboring people as having evolved from the Jewish line. Uh, so like it has a historical component to it. Does it fit as part of the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah story? Not super well, but this is just kind of where it's historically been put. Again, from a literary standpoint, it would make more sense if they just skipped the entire okay, but there was a town and they didn't want to walk that far. So they hung out there instead and God said, okay. And like, okay, it's just- there. Like, there, we'll, we'll get to the theological underpinning. It makes so little sense from a storytelling standpoint that it, it causes my literalism to jump in again and be like, so did this actually happen? Probably not entirely in that way. Like the, it happened, it, it being laid out the way it is, is meant to, demonstrate certain lessons which we'll get to in a minute when we're done with the kind of historical criticism uh but again don't look at this as a literal history it's pretty clear that the the whole dad fucking piece came in from some other story and is put here to establish a patrilineal connection of the ammonites and the moabites to the line of lot uh and thereby to abraham's family yada yada like it, it's there to establish a lineage connection um, and it's put there because it was the closest and most appropriate apocalyptic story because, well, by the point this was put together, we'd already been telling the Genesis narrative about Noah and that piece of, you know, naked dad gets drunk is already there. So just stick it here. Um, like the, the assemblage isn't meant to be strictly historical or even narratively co coherent in the way we would do it modernly. So the best advice I can offer is don't think too hard about it. Like so you circled back around to giving it a wide berth. I, it's not okay. Like none of this passage is okay. Yeah. Like there's there, a there's a reason why it's given a wide berth because modernly none of this is okay. 
it's worth recognizing. I'm pretty sure it wasn't okay then. Well, it's worth recognizing, one, that there is a history in multiple communities, not just the, the uh, ancient Christian slash Jewish communities, yada, yada, yada. There is a, a very ancient tradition of incest being used as a temporary tool in highly apocalyptic situations in their oral histories. Whether that actually happened that way or not, who knows? Like, we, we get hints of that in the post-flood scenario. Hell, we even get hints of that in the post-creation narrative. I get that, but then why have the why have the whole bit with the and again I'm tr- treating it as fiction for the purposes of trying to understand it. Then then why the whole thing with with the town? They're different pieces. Like again, you're trying to think of this as a coherent narrative, which isn't going to get you anywhere with this section of the Bible. Like the story about about having sex with dad and making kids and that's it. Like that was inserted into the story. Uh, later on, which is a terrible phrasing given the story, but nonetheless, um, it was... You're having fun and I'm just horrified. <laughs> hey, if you're going to be horrified, you may as well have fun while doing it, because this one was always going to be horrifying. But the way it's connected is a matter of convenience, not narrative-like clarity. So yeah. it, happen- it happens because it happens, because we needed the story in the mindset of those who are drafting the original Genesis structure. But we need the story in here, and here's as good a place as any. So yada yada, they were in Zor, so they went up to the cave, and then the, the sex happened, and then there's the Moabites and the Ammonites, and yeah, move on. Just move on. It's just a couple of verses, just move on. Like, and that's pretty much the gist of it, literarily speaking. Now, there are still certain moral and ethical lessons we can draw from it, of course, but the biggest piece of it is that. Now, the other pieces I wanted to bring up are... First off, like the reason why this is here is kind of to create a historical lessening of the Moabites and the Ammonites. Like there are, you've seen it, we've had a couple of these already where they put a line and say, oh yeah, and this is where these people came from, from this horrific act here. Like, yeah. okay, like this is this is this is why we don't like Moabites and Ammonites. Uh, that because, makes a lot more sense. Yeah, because they come from this place. Now that that's a piece of it. There's also another piece that you have to remember that according to old, much, much old, like the ancient Jewish law, like incest wasn't quite as frowned upon. We'll get to this when we get to talking about Onan, which, oh my God, that will probably wind up being a two-part episode. But like there was a whole Jewish custom whereby um, if your brother was married and your brother died before producing an heir, then you had to go screw his wife and produce an heir for him Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's just how it worked um Uh, can you see how that's maybe different yeah i'm not saying it's not i'm just saying that these sorts of interactions there were situations where according to jewish law like dad had to step in and do it like but the, the really old stuff like there were a lot of different components to this and they weren't as black and white when it comes to ethical boundaries as we are today uh, this is a crossing of the, even those boundaries, I'll admit. But the point I'm making is it's a much shorter stone's throw to hear from where they were than from where we are. Yeah. So, like, I'm not saying it's right. I'm definitely not no, saying no, anything that, that happens here is right. No, that, that, to- that totally makes sense. And, like, understanding of, like, what incest does to a, a like, bloodline and the health of the offspring and stuff like that is, I mean, help. Darwin but, was like screwing his cousin. Yeah. Let's remember, let's remember was like, this, wait a minute, is this, this bad for genetics? Yeah. Let's <laughs> remember at this point in history, nobody had seen King Charles yet. Anywho, my, my, my necessary dab at the King of England out of the way. Um, I'm still American. As much as I hate it, I'm still there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Insert. Myself. Yeah, insert uh, footage of George Washington driving a monster truck here. Yeah. <sighs> got, got to take a shot at the king. Anyway, um, but at the, like at the time, like the, the, the knowledge of how bad incest was wasn't really a thing. Uh, there were cultural conditions at which incest was considered like, okay, yeah, well, just have a brother do it or a father do it because the line's continuity is necessary. Uh, women being seen as property and not like vessels for continuing the line and not necessarily like contribute. Yeah, but they're the ones doing it in this story. <laughs> okay, and shall we talk about how women can be complicit in patriarchal systems and not just victims? Like, yeah, when you're yeah. raised in the system, you become complicit in it as well. Like, yeah, they're still operating under the same cultural system that views themselves as property. Uh, and they didn't understand how genetics work at all, which means that they're seeing yeah. women as 
vessels for continuing the male's line and not as cogenitors of a uh, DNA morphological mix. So yeah, like it, 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 it's not right, but it's a much shorter hop from where they were intellectually, culturally, and yeah. methodologically than where we are now. Like where we're now, we're like, oh God, that's wrong on every possible level. And the reason they felt it important to keep it around was, I imagine, for completion and for the, exp you know, the mandatory explanation of, okay, this is how we're related yeah. to these people. Yeah, like those are important pieces. It's also worth noting, and this is an argument that comes up every time someone discusses, and boy, is it discussed, the concept of scriptural deletion. Of what, should we just cut this piece out? Like, do we need it anymore? Should it still be here? Um, like this I, is that's a slippery slope. I get slippery, that. It's not just even a slippery slope argument. Like the concept of do we still need this often comes up around things that are outdated, that are backwards, that are flat out wrong, like this one here. And the answer is, of course, no, we shouldn't delete it because we should recognize the points at which we were wrong. Yeah. And like, yeah, let's get dad drunk and rape the bejesus out of him for no clear reason. Definitely not a positive way to go. I mean, admittedly, it does stress the Abrahamic connection that they're trying to solve their problems with sexual assault. It's a family trait. Um, they don't even really have a problem here. They're just kind of like, and that's really the thing here is like, it's not really a problem. This is the narrative insertion here makes this so it's not even really a problem. They're just like, all right, well, we're living in a cave, so whatever, dude. You know, and so so that's the historical and literary context of it. So I guess the question we have now is what can we actually learn from this? Any guesses? Well, uh, I guess the first thing that my brain sprung to was the whole, um, you can't always just take God's plan into your own hands and just be like, oh, well, I think I should do this then. Um, sorry, sorry, just laughing at the idea of taking God's plan into your hands in this context, but continue. I'm sorry, I can't not make the easy joke when it's right in front of me. Congratulations, you're more immature than me. <laughs> hey, they don't call me pastor for nothing. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I've completely lost my train of thought now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the question of what can we learn from this is where, is where we're at. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess then it begs the question, Question: was this part of God's will that they do this? God's not mentioned anywhere in there. I, I always use this, this cautionary statement when we talk about what is God's will in the story. Um, you know, God's will is the starting point of the story and the ending point of the story. And God will nudge things throughout the middle. But, like, God isn't specifically sitting there saying, okay... Now you go into him on the first night and you go into him on the second night and make sure you use this wine and not the other one. Like God isn't micromanaging. Okay, there's a lot of decision-making power that is left up to the individual for good or for ill. And it's this wonderful thing we call free will. And in this situation, free will didn't exactly go so hot for the humans at hand. Um, but it's worth exploring too. There's a series of bad decisions that are happening in this narrative, if we accept it as a straightforward narrative, at least. Uh, and the first one is right in verse 30. So now Lot went up out of Zoar and settled in the hills with his two daughters, for he was afraid to stay in Zoar, so he lived in a cave with his two daughters. The hell for? Yeah, well, I mean, I think you can kind of hear in my tone as I was reading it, because I almost read this before. And I was like, nah, let's wing it. You get the live reaction to me reading something I haven't read in like 20 years. I'm like, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> So let me, let me, and this is, you know, I asked the question, freaking why? Because of verse um, 21, where God literally speaks to Lot and says, he said to him, very well, I will grant you this favor and will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Like, he, and then he doesn't live there. He literally got it out of God's lips. Fine, that one is safe. Just go there and stay there. 
And he gets there and he's like, yeah, I ain't staying here. What? I mean, there, there's got to be some kind of context to this. I mean, Lot just came out of Sodom. Sodom just got wiped off the face of the, the map. And Lot was someone who had lived long term in Sodom. Like, if there was more context to that, like, the people of Zohar did not want him staying there because they just saw what happened to Sodom and they didn't want a single Sodomite in their damn city. Like, that, that I could understand at least a little bit. But it's not there. And, and it's all about Lot being like, ah, yeah, it's not quite for me. Yeah. So that's our first bad decision. And Lord Almighty, we see this often enough in the modern world where people, particularly of the conservative variety, are just like, yeah, I know it seems like this is a God thing to do, but I just don't feel right about it. So I'm going to go do this instead. Like, I know we're supposed to feed the poor and the hungry, but if I don't get my Starbucks every day, then I'm just going to be grumpy and that's not going to help anyone. So screw you, poor person. Like, I know I'm, I, I don't know exactly who I'm poking at for this particular example, but like that that mentality of here's the right thing to do, the, the, the clearly God-ordained thing to do. Here's the selfish thing to do. I'm going to go do this instead and dialing it up dialing it up to 11 in that childish way too of not just like i'm gonna leave zar but like what i'm gonna go live in a cave yeah and i mean some of this like is attributable to apocalyptic interpolation like this is an apocalypse a piece out of an apocalypse story that's been grafted into the lot narrative and isn't native to this story it does but, feel yeah. like it's lacking a lot of context like mm -hmm. just this is a weird cut of the story yeah yeah and basically it like it's worth considering verse 30 and into 31 there as uh, the dialogic equivalent of basically just bridge text here. Like this is a story from somewhere else and we need to write something that makes it connect here. Now Lot went up out of Zoar and settled into the hills with his two daughters for he was afraid to stay in Zoar because somehow Emperor Palpatine has returned. Like that's pretty much it. See, I can make a Star Wars joke too. I'm not a one trick pony. I'm not just Star Trek. I, I, I don't know if any movie has made has lost my respect so quickly i saw that movie in theaters i had a newborn baby at home it was my first date after giving birth screw that movie anyway yeah, look I, star wars rage aside <sighs> i i love i love a good jedi that the parallels between that and christian asceticism notwithstanding like th there's so much in that but no, screw that movie. Seriously, screw that movie. And J.J. Abrams, screw you specifically for ruining not only a series of Star Wars, but also a series of Star Trek. All right. You had to get both. Anyway, anyway, the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that pretty much covers it. It's like, this is horrific. It's an interpolation of a different story for a different purpose. It's left in there specifically for lineage purposes. Uh, it has connection to cultural practices that are long since outdated and were kind of weird even in their time. Um, it's just a weird one. Um, but, but for all of the horrific weirdness in this one, I do want to highlight that this actually does feature something that we rarely get in what is ostensibly, or at least according to the narrative, supposed to be an heroic female character. Like one of the good girls, or got, good girl sounds weird on saying good guys. One of the good guys who happens to be, God, I hate English. Anyway, um, one they, of the- Japanese. I don't even know how to phrase that with Japanese. Anyway, um, so we don't see this particular type of action very often on female characters who are considered on the righteous side of things in a given narrative. And that is an outright display of sexual agency absent the involvement of a man in, in well, active force. Uh, like, I mean, the, the man's a prop in this one, let's be honest. Um, but we don't, like, setting aside the ethical concerns, like this is this is meant to be a positive story in the context. We're of the looking for something. We're looking for something positive at this point, and we're seeing agency. Well, yes, but like I mean, this is from a modern lens. This is negative. 
from this context of the time in which it was written, this was considered a generally positive act. They're repropagating the species and moving forward. And it is rare to see that kind of a, what is ostensibly meant to be positive action taken by a female without male instigation. And for as horrific as this story is, the fact that it was intended to be non-horrific and that it was written with female agency in mind, not to condemn the women, like this is not. Yeah, I get what you're saying. The, the people life. who wrote this down saw yeah. this, saw the women in this scene as the heroes. Yeah, and they they saw this as a generally heroic act, uh, and it is extremely rare, particularly in old biblical texts, to get women engaging in an an heroic sexual act without condemnation. I mean, obviously, we don't see this heroic nowadays, but in the context of the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it so, needs to be addressed in the context of the time yeah no that's 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 interesting yeah i wouldn't and necessarily yeah, I see that too it's just so it just sucks that it has to be this one that we start so with. backwards yeah like, like yeah i mean but for yeah. what it's worth like this is exactly that now there are we could go down the rabbit hole with the questions of sexual agency and whatnot with respect to the bible we're not going to do that today but there is that little rose among the pile of shit <laughs> like the, so there is that and like there is the lesson to be had about lot just ditching zoar for no clear reason um and that's about all there really is to take from this i think like it's not one that i would spend a lot of time on unless i was doing genealogical work um which admittedly spent a lot of time on it though <laughs> hey <laughs> yeah yeah wow you know, back to basics, spending way more time on incest than we really want to. You're going to have a fun time titling this one, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> I pretty much already got it sorted. Okay, are, are, we, are we done with this one? I, I, I just very suddenly became embarrassed about how much, how much time we've dedicated to this portion of a chapter. Just wait till you see the flavor text tagline for this one. It's, it's going to be a good one. <laughs> Anywho, um, being that that's the end, from our next episode, we're going to be sliding our way into Genesis chapter 20, which I hate to tell you, is going to be continuing in a very particular theme. Um, if, you were, if you were wondering, uh, oh good, have we finally reached the point at which sexual assault stops becoming a theme for the early heroes of the Bible? <laughs> we're not there yet. Um, this is going to go on for a minute. 20. Uh, yeah, Tony is Abraham and Sarah oh. and Gerar, which is selling Abraham selling his wife into sexual slavery again, just for again, again, freaking uh. again. As I pointed out, biblical hero doesn't necessarily mean good guy. <laughs> I mean, we we've joked about it and joked about it. Yeah, and joked I about know it. that, but I I always thought like the well, yeah. That's not really any better. Sorry, I'm thinking about I mean, David. Yeah, um, we're gonna we'll get into it later, but because there's a whole other episode to get into this, which for you can calm down that the whole new episode for us is gonna be in like three minutes. So like it's cool. We'll get into it. In the meantime, if you please. Oh yeah, like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, those things. What are very helpful, uh, particularly. Yeah. Please. Yes, please, 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 please. Onegaitashimas. You know, share that share them around show them to your friends your neighbors uh blast them uh without any care or regard on loudspeakers and bulletin boards on the side of your house uh rent a projector and like you know shoot it up on the back of your garage whatever um you know just get, get it out there get the word out there uh you know show it to your grandma see if you can give her a heart attack get that inheritance you know whatever write it on the inside of a bathroom stall and dry erase marker <laughs> It's an idea. Um, as for usual, the links for everything are down below. My God, are we having discussions up on the Discord server? I hope you can join us for that. we got an ongoing Bible study. Uh, by the time this episode comes out, we'll be closing in on Christmas. And for those of you that are on the Japan side of things and watching this, we're going to be having ourselves a banger of a Christmas Eve service on, uh, you guessed it, Christmas Eve. Uh, it'll be December the 24th. It's a Saturday, about 4 p.m. We're going to be having a fellowship and communion service kind of like a maundy thursday but for christmas it's gonna be kind of a new and interesting sort of thing i hope you can join us 
Uh, and if you can't join us because you're in the United States, well, sorry, it sucks to be you. I will still be praying for you anyway, and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. In the meantime, like I said, Discord links below, websites links below. Um, you can shoot me an email, carrier pigeon, smoke signals, whatever you know suits you. Get in touch with us, but above all, have yourself a good week, and we will see you on the next episode. Take care, y'all. Bye. Thank you.